morning and welcome to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is new beginnings. What would it be like if we were to allow ourselves to start fresh and, and um, you know, create a new declaration of this is a new start or this is, this is a beginning of something new? Um, I think that it could be very enlivening and revitalizing. So we get to explore that together today. Uh, but before we get started, let's take a couple minutes to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells and your organs and bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating this brilliant beam of light from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, Exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together, rub your hands together vigorously. Feel that friction, the temperature, the energy, the buzzing, the tingling, the tickling, and allow those sensations to bring you present right here, right now into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Rosalind. So good to have you here with us this morning. And welcome to everybody else who's joining us. So today we're talking about new beginnings and how in any moment we can declare a new beginning. Um, and uh, this, this topic is inspired by a client who um, in the context of our session, uh, I, I asked, well, what did, you, what did you get from today's session? And uh, one of the things they said is, this is how I wanna live my life from now on, from this place. And um, it, was, it was a profound, awakening on their part to be making that conscious declaration. Yes, Rosalind, beautiful. Rosalind says, not waiting for something tragic to happen to make a new beginning. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, I, I've been thinking about, uh, you know, the next phase of my life and, um, you know, creating a, a new beginning and what that might look like. And um, we have the opportunity, like we lose sight of the fact in the, in the ongoing um, progression of one day into the next, we lose sight of the fact that in any moment we can declare a new beginning and, and we can, you know, yes, there's baggage from the past, you know, yes, there, there is experience from the past and, and, and things that, you know, have their continuity, but it doesn't mean that we can't start fresh on so many different fronts, right? And even, even where relationships are challenging, you know, maybe we can say, hey, can we start over? Or can we, can we create a fresh start here? Can we uh, have an intention to recreate this from a new space? And we, we forget, you know, we get so um, admired in the, the, day-to-day -day demands, you know, that, that we forget that we actually have the opportunity to step out of it at any moment, you know, to, to create a, a new beginning. And, 
it may be, you know, like, yeah, this could be, it could be intimidating. It could be scary, you know, to, to be recreating something, but it offers us a profound opportunity to kind of reset things, to reshape things. And it is through our declaration. You know, it, when, it, when it comes to relationships, obviously you need to have a willing partner who is willing to reset things, but we can reset our own attitudes about things at any moment. You know, we can rethink things. We can, we can make declarations about, um, about who we are choosing to be and how we are choosing to be. And then we can step into those new ways of being. Good morning, good morning, Lisa. So good to have you back with us. Welcome. Um, we're, talking, um, we're talking about new beginnings. And um, there's tremendous power in being able to step back from the way things are and saying, you know what? I wanna start fresh. You know, so one of the times that we think about new beginnings and starting fresh and how we can um, navigate that is um, how we can navigate that is how is, um, I'm sorry, somebody just texted something, totally derailed me. And I have to, I have to share it with you. This is really, really interesting. So um, a deep friend of mine, a dear, dear friend of mine. Um, so Lisa said, I just did that. Thank you, God, for creating a new beginning. So talking about new beginnings, this friend had some extreme, extreme pain, ended up having surgery to fuse some uh, a couple vertebra and as a result her her voice because they had to go in from the front of her throat her voice was um was gone i mean she sounded she was very croaky in the in her speaking you know she just she couldn't stand the sound of her own voice she says uh Hi, friends, something miraculous has happened. I got COVID on Sunday. So, you know, that doesn't sound really miraculous. But as symptoms started, my voice came back. Probably because um, the swelling from COVID in my throat has brought the vocal folds into position again. But either way, I'll take it. Um, so anyway, how amazing is that, that you know, what we, what we look at to what you said earlier, Rosalind, about not waiting for tragedy to happen in order to make a change, you know, how often we look at something and think it's tragic and, and then we get this unexpected gift, you know, like having your voice come back when you get COVID. That's wild, right? Wild. Anyway, um, new beginnings. And, and so Lisa, you did do that as a matter of fact, in a big way in your life, but we can declare these new beginnings at any time. We don't have to wait for life to squeeze us into a corner to start fresh. You know, we don't have to necessarily have a disaster happen in order to start over. And um, so In, in thinking about what new life might look like, or at, Lisa says, I started a new job too. You just sort of turned everything upside down. And I'm wondering, are you feeling a new vitality from that, Lisa? Um, you know, I know, I know stress can be, I mean, change can be stressful, even positive change because you know there's so much that's different but it also can be incredibly invigorating and break up old patterns and and so what does it mean in the context of your regular life to create something new to say 
I, I'm starting over. I'm creating a fresh start. I'm making a new beginning. So what I was saying is that we often, you know, New Year's is a time typically for making new declarations and new beginnings. And I'm going to start this diet and and I'm going to start exercising and all of that stuff. And and we use that marker, that arbitrary kind of arbitrary marker to um, go morning. Good morning, Bernadette. Wonderful to have you here with us this morning. We use that arbitrary marker to give us an excuse to create, you know, to start something fresh. But we can do that at any time. Right. And even with things like diets or or exercise or sleep patterns or any of that stuff, you know, we can start and then some oftentimes we have um, we have irregular starts, right? We start and then fall by the wayside and then we figure, oh, well, it's, you know, too late. I, I messed that up and, and, but we can always begin again. You know, we can always start it anytime we want. Lisa says 100%, there's always hiccups, but it's really the best thing I ever did for myself. Even the birds are thriving. It's wonderful. Oh, Lisa, that is so amazing to hear. Yes, uh, so you you picked up everything and changed everything, um, and we can do that, or you know we can do that in in much smaller increments too. We don't. It's not that you have to pick up and move your life, although that can be a wonderful thing, you know, to to say, okay, I'm starting over. I'm going to go to a new place. And I'm going to have a new job or, you know, new scenery and just start over. We can do that in on any number of degrees. And um, there's a there's a profound freedom in that to remake ourselves. We can remake ourselves at any moment. And. It was so profound to hear this client say, this is how I want to live my life after, after so many years of struggle, to just become present to that desire to make that declaration. When we make a declaration, there's, there's power in it. And it doesn't mean you don't slide back, but, you know, there's, there's, direction and power and so bernadette says my new marker started yesterday of living a life of not seeing my grandchildren on a physical daily they moved four provinces away wow that's a big change Mar bernadette so um i i get that that you've seen your grandchildren every day and now you won't be seeing them daily um, I don't know what kind of time is involved in four provinces, but, you know, maybe, maybe you get to take advantage of Zoom and, and um, our wonderful technology, at least to be able to see each other, right? That can, that, um, that can maybe help to ease the, the transition. And, and still keep you connected. Lisa says, I hate change. So the change changed everything, including me. So maybe you can say, I used to hate change, Lisa, because it sounds to me like you're thriving as, as you have been in the midst of this change. And it sounds like it gave you a, a massive, uh, jump start, uh, you know, like a, a infusion of profound energy, Lisa. So congratulations for that for you. Congratulations for that. So Roslyn says it's hard to set aside old baggage like memories, conditional patterns and relationships, much less become aware of my own true desires. Even when I have a wish, sometimes it feels like, how am I going to make that happen? So you co you're talking about a really important point, Rosalyn. So, um, and, and it is hard to set aside old baggage, memories, 
conditional patterns, relationships, yes. Um, it is, it, it's challenging because it is literally stepping outside the box that we have constructed for ourselves, right? And um, the thing that you're saying, much less become aware of my own true desires, the, that's where to start is to start allowing yourself to become aware of your own true desires. And then what, what arises is how am I gonna make that happen when you think of a wish or desire? And part of making that happen, I believe is saying, I'm, I'm gonna have that happen. And then it's remarkable when you have that commitment and that conviction how the universe will move to support you in that conviction. And um, you can allow for the unfolding of it. You know, like I have, have still no idea how the eco park is gonna happen, but I have been moving forward with, with steps that are taking me in that direction and in the process are lighting up my life. So in the process of, after committing to make having something happen, um, then uh, the, the journey there gives us amazing vitality and life. Bernadette says, three days of driving, LOL. Technology is good, but not the same as cuddle, as a cuddle. I get you, Bernadette. 100%, three days of driving is, a, is quite the distance for sure. Um, but, but technology at least can help and who knows, maybe you'll move to closer to where they are. You never know, you get, to, you get to be looking at your options and opportunities. So Lisa says, exactly, I've completely evolved. This so, in that change in, in um, oh, I missed one of the things that you said, Lisa, it's amazing that me a chicken jumped off a cliff. It was terrifying. Yes, so um, stepping into our possibility is one of the most terrifying things we can do. And congratulations to you for having done it and look at, look at what it's given you, right? It's given you a whole new life. So congratulations, that's, and like you said, you've completely evolved, it's transformative because you get to, you get to um, generate new ways of being that are not bound by our habitual patterns that, that while they offer some comfort, offer also are, tremendously constraining, right? So um, Bernadette says, yes, change into the unknown can be very scary. A hundred percent Bernadette. And Lisa says, I totally believe I manifested by my home, manifested my home by the beach. I could even see it in my mind. Then voila. So you already stepped outside of your patterning to be able to imagine this place. And, and then the, the universe supported you in that. <clears throat> so congratulations. Um, so Bernadette says, opportunity of getting my daughter and her family to jump into the unknown is in the works. Beautiful, Bernadette. That's very, very, very exciting for you. And so change, change, the thing about change is it's disruptive. That's why they call it change, <laughs> right? And, and we get so admired and enmeshed in our habits and patterns that change is, is um, well, we can declare it. That's how it starts, you know, and sometimes it starts in spite of us, but we also can declare it. We also can embrace it. We can generate it. And, um, and uh, back to what you said, Rosalind, is we don't have to generate it out of 
tragedy, right? We can, we can generate change out of inspiration. And um, that's where we can create new beginnings at any moment. We don't have to wait for something outside of us to make that change happen. We can, we can embrace a new beginning at any time. So um, Lisa says, replying to Bernadette, my grandson lives in Georgia. Georgia, I never get to see him. Well, who knows? Who knows what the future may hold, Lisa? Um, you know, maybe that's something that we can manifest also is just envisioning that beautiful relationship. And, um, you know, like we can change our attitude toward the things that, well, well here we go with the, the wisdom prayer, right? God, or the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept those things I cannot change. Courage to change those things I can and wisdom to know the difference. So we get to encourage, bring courage into ourselves to change those things that we can change and um, for that we want to change for the better, you know, that we want to change for, to move toward and an greater and aliveness. So um, Lisa says, change is necessary. I repeat, change the things you can accept. Change the things you, you can. There we go. Change the things you can, accept the things you can't. Exactly. Change, change is life. You know, life, life is not stagnant, right? But we can keep ourselves vital and alive by initiating change. You know, we can become very complacent and comfortable just living our day-to-day -day routine and is that living? I guess that's a question. Um, so Bernadette says, I'm the type of person that welcomes the majority of change, but having family close is my heartbeat. Well, so hopefully, um, hopefully you will find a way to be able to um, nourish that heartbeat, Bernadette. And Lisa says, I'm working on it. <laughs> so um, accepting the things I cannot change and changing those things I can and choose to. Um, Rosalind says, where does our attention go towards today? Look at what's important and what isn't. From that place, having faith, it will start to flow. A really good point, Rosalind. Um, so many of us focus our attention on things that are unimportant. You know, and because part, I think part of that is because we're living in a world where there's so much change, where there's so much going on that we can't necessarily or we don't, you know, we, we can't control, you know, there's stuff going on that that we get to navigate that is beyond our control, right? And so we put oftentimes as an escape, we put our attention on little stuff that really isn't that important that we can affect, that we can make a difference with. And um, it's a deflection of our attention. And there's some comfort in the predictability of or the ability to control these little things. Um, but maybe stepping beyond that, certainly there's, there's more potential, more possibility to be stepping beyond that. And, and we need, admittedly, we need some, some safe place or some feeling of a place that we can 
relax into also you know it's it, we can't always be pedal to the metal high high adrenaline because that will burn out your adrenals but um we're we're looking to find a dynamic balance we talked about dynamic flow yesterday so uh, lisa says thank goodness for facetime exactly 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 that's where we get to connect I, I some of my some of my closest relationships are with people that i've only met virtually how weird is that right um but <clears throat> in a in a um well in a in a, what was a covid world <clears throat> For instance, we we get to you know we got to connect even more virtually, but also I have friends all over all over the country and and all over the world that you know some many of whom I've only met through virtual connections. So we get to, we're very, very, very fortunate in that respect to be able to be connecting with people throughout the world where distance is not a factor anymore to be able to be cultivating real relationships. It's amazing. And then I've had occasion to meet these people that I had only met virtually in person and wow, what a wonderful experience that is. That's mind blowing. Anyway, so new beginnings. Find something you can declare as a new beginning today. Start, a, start something new today. And, and um, that, you know, or, or a new today that enlivens and invigorates you. That's the invitation. So. Uh, that's it for this morning. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. Lisa says, I made so many wonderful friends online. It's so cool when you meet them face to face. It really is. It really is amazing. It's a miracle of our modern age. So anyway, you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for engaging in these conversations and for um, enriching my life and um, and those the lives of everyone who's sharing and it is such a gift to be with you guys so much love until next time and I hope to see you again here really really soon <laughs>